Hey, Rep fans! Yeah! God, Roland had an irritating voice, didn't he? I mean, if he was a guy in the bar, you'd avoid him, wouldn't you? I mean, he's probably the sort of guy who eats Fray Bento pies and, and talks about trains and fills socks up with semen over pictures of Letitia Dean. I can't stand him. And yes, I have got an annoying voice myself, so I'm absolutely qualified to say this. Anyway, puppets. We've already had a few puppets so far on this channel, namely Ed the Duck being one, there's the link to his video that I made just above there, and Gilbert the Alien being another, there's the link to his video up there if the Ed the Duck one's disappeared, and Terry McGann, there's a link to his video, him from Minder uh, being the last because you know what Dennis Waterman is actually made out of felt, did you know that though? Roland Rat was the first, I remember, co-hosting children's television and was indeed the catalyst for the kids' TV puppet presenter gig in the UK television scene of the 1980s. That would give us uh, the aforementioned Ed and Gilbert, along with Gordon the Gopher, Nobby the Sheep and others that did certainly exist, but I'm not going to mention them here because I'm the wrong side of bloody lazy. The reason that there were so many puppets on UK TV was because of Roland. Because for a time, he was massively, massively popular. His introduction was credited as saving the ailing TV AM show on ITV, which, if you don't remember, was the Good Morning Britain of its time. Though, of course, we know that the puppet on that show says controversial contrarian things for money and uh, hacks the phones of dead schoolgirls. Who says modern TV is less edgy? So, yes, Roland Rat was on TV AM between 1983 and 1985, the saviour of ITV's morning television content, with multiple hours of the show handed over to him for half-term mini-serials and little presenting gigs of cartoons. He would have multiple exorable chart singles, merchandise, foodstuffs, clothing, and he would even earned himself a transfer to the BBC for a six-year stint that involved him hosting various uh, chat shows and quiz shows. He's wheeled out still on the odd TV show as a sort of nostalgic attraction. His success is down to the creative genius of Dave Claridge, who manufactured, operated and voiced Roland. The brash and overly confident Roland uh, is aided by other small mammals such as Welsh boffin Errol the Hamster and the dim-witted sycophant Kevin the Gerbil. And they all hang out in Rat Cave 1, which is under King's Cross Station. It is Rat Cave 1 that provides the initial setting for Ocean's Roland's Rat Race that was released at the back of the Vermin's TV AM run in 1985 for the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum. Programmed by Ocean Regulars Denton Designs, Roland's Rat Race is a flip screen adventure putting you in the leather hat of the titular Plague Carrier. The storyline is that Roland is late for his uh, stint at the TVEM studio and so has to rush to the studio so his segment is replaced. Some complete numbnuts has broken his door and scattered the pieces around, which uh, will probably give him that sort of early morning panicky angst that we all feel when we can't find our keys. I bet he's feeling ratty. <sighs> I'm sorry. Roland is prevented from... Uh, doing his hotchpotch portal temporal DIY by a fudge ton of sentient Wellington boots. Or is that a gang of ghosts' insensible footwear for a sewer adventure? Do ghosts actually have to worry about getting human excrement on them? I don't know. Do they have mums that complain about it? And does this mean that they're naked apart from these shoes? And as we all know, everyone looks far more nakeder when they're wearing shoes and nothing else than if they're wearing nothing at all. At least I think that anyway. But uh, you might have your own judgment on that. But as you can see, nothing at all 
on these ghosts apart from the Wellingtons I'm not sure that my made up law applies here all I know is that they're here to eviscerate Britain's most famous 20th century rodent puppet icon you can stop their ill intent by firing a load of horse bone juice over them using your patented long range glue cannon this sticks them fast and allows Rodan to pass them unscathed but beware the glue gun only has limited ammo this can be topped up with little pots of PVA that have been left lying around the sewer alleys you can also replenish Rodan's health by eating food that can be found not on a plate on the sewer floor and I guess just like we had to have a word with that prisoner in Nightmare, we have to have a word with Roland about hygiene. Don't eat food you find on the floor of a sewer, kids. You probably will die. Graphically, Roland's Rat Race does a reasonable job, though there is less variety here than in the cereal aisle of Tesco during the coronavirus. That is a joke about the breakfast cereal variety packs do you see do you see variety variety breakfast cereal oh god You've got multiple sewer tunnels that look very samey, but then sewers aren't that known for multiple decors uh, because, uh, you know, what they're designed just for getting your rump logs from A to Z, and maybe I shouldn't expect too much of them. The lack of variety in the sewer tunnel makes the game very hard to navigate around, though, so you may need to draw or have access to a map. Roland, well, he looks fairly recognisable, and that's a huge plus for any game from this era. Yes, he does look like Roland Rat, although he doesn't look half as annoying. Plus, if you look at the top of the screen, there is some window dressing in the form of traffic, and you know what, sometimes a dude rides past on a C5, and you've got to respect the use of a C5 on a Spectrum game, I'm pretty sure that is the law. Control, well, there's no jump to um, clear the wellies, and it's a bugger to get um, upstairs or downstairs in a similar way that it was um, to preambulate betwixt floors using stairs in Denton's game based on the Transformers. There is a link to that. Boy, I'm getting happy with the links. Have I got enough links left? Probably not. The flip screen movement can sometimes flip the controls, and this tends to happen every time you go through one of the tunnels that litter the environment. It plays all right, you know. It's very simple in its design, and it's okay. It's sort of like a low-budget, no-jump-button Dan Dare, and I quite like Dan Dare. After a run of really rather ropey uh, TV spectrum games, it's pleasant to play something inoffensively above average. Your Sinclair, or your Spectrum as it was known when Minor Willy was a boy, enjoyed it, giving Roland's Rat Race 8 out of 10. They recommend you make a map, which they're right, and they state that if you're a Roland Rat fan, then this is a must. Are there any of them left? I hope not. Sinclair user, um, well, they stuck our Roland on the front cover even, and uh, they gave his game a four star review, saying in the final analysis that Roland's rat race was good fun. Yes. Crash felt that uh, Ocean got it all wrong though, and uh, they thought it was nothing special, and they gave it a 66%, and well, that's fair enough. Well, I think I've done all the TV puppets now. So, to celebrate, let's look at footage of two of them being interviewed alongside Britain's most notorious tracksuited nonce. OK. Thanks. Bye. Ooh. Oh, dear. <laughs> 